So, how many calories did you have for breakfast today? I think I had about 600, a couple of cups of muesli, two tablespoons of yogurt, some full cream milk. I probably shouldn't have had that. Did you know it takes about a litre of water to grow one calorie of food? That's an awful lot of water when you add, add that up for one person's food over one day, let alone the whole world's population over a whole year. I'd like you to meet Lucy. She's a farmer from Tanzania. And the fact that it takes a litre of water to grow a calorie of food means an awful lot to her. That's because she farms in a very dry climate and she needs to use irrigation to grow crops to feed her family. Her business is growing as much food as she possibly can for every drop of water she uses. Now, life's pretty tough for Lucy. She gets up early every morning and needs to get her youngest children ready for school. And then she's off to her farm. It's a seven kilometre walk in the hot, blazing sun. Now today, she's carrying a 50 kilogram bag of fertiliser on her back. It was expensive to purchase. She in fact had to sell the family goat to pay for it. But she knows it's worth it because that fertiliser contains precious nutrition that together with the water she applies in irrigation is what her crops need to grow. Now, Lucy's been a farmer nearly her whole life, but she still struggles with this daily decision about whether she should irrigate her crops or not. When she reaches her plots today, the soil looks really dry on top. It might need watering, but for all she knows, it could be quite moist underneath, and she doesn't, in fact, need to irrigate. Last season, she learnt to some regret what happens if you put too much water on. What happened was all that irrigation and rainfall washed away the fertiliser from her crop's roots. The plants turned yellow, they didn't yield very well, and it was a disaster. But she also knows that she doesn't want to hold off watering too long as well. Earlier this season, she waited until the plants were visibly wilting in the hot midday sun, and by then it was too late. They had already lost some yield. So she thinks to herself, wouldn't it be fantastic if I had some way of being able to visualise how much moisture is in my soil that's surrounding my crop's roots, so that I know on any given day whether I should be irrigating or not? Now, Lucy doesn't farm on her own. She's in an irrigation scheme with her fellow villagers. They share water that's pumped down a canal each day to them. Now, most of the time, they kind of get on well. They know when to share that water between themselves, but sometimes they end up fighting over water when everyone wants to apply irrigation on the same day. Now today, Lucy happens to be having a fight with her neighbour. He thinks he's going to need to water today and she thinks she might be needing to water today and they disagree. There's a big knot in her stomach over this disharmony that's, that this is causing. And this happens quite often. Lucy knows that a lot of her fellow villagers apply water often when they don't need to. But she doesn't have the firm evidence to show that that's the case. It's just a hunch. A lot of people are watering because the water is there every day and it's free. And why wouldn't you? 
So this is when our team comes in. We're from CSIRO, which is Australia's National Science Agency. And our team, led by Richard here, have invented a simple yet ingenious digital device. It's called a chameleon. It's named after the reptile that changes colour in response to its environment. And the chameleon measures soil moisture. Lucy needs to bring this reader connected up to the moisture sensors in her plots and the lights turn blue if the soil is really wet, red if it's really dry and green if it's in between, a little bit moist. By looking at the lights, she can immediately visualise how much moisture is in her soil. She doesn't have to look at numbers or graphs. She looks at the colour patterns. The team have also invented another device called the full stop. It's that red plastic device Richard's holding. He's about to install it into the soil. The full stop is a plastic funnel that catches moisture as it trickles through the soil. A farmer can take a little sample of that water, dip a little plastic, a little paper strip that will change colour and tell them how much nutrition is in their soil. So Lucy has a chameleon to tell her how much moisture is in the soil, a full stop to tell her how much nutrition is in the soil, and between both sets of readings, she knows how much her crops have to grow on. So, Lucy arrives on her plot today, and um, let's hear what she's got to say about what she sees. Yeah, it is blue. It, show, it is showing that there's still moisture. So she's saying this is a, an advantage of the chameleon. Before, if it was like this, when she comes and see the soil is dry on the top, she could just irrigate. But now she's sure that there's still water and she can do other things with this. She says she can use that time either to weed or she can have, sm she has small business. So Lucy's translator there is telling us that, well, Lucy's soil looks quite dry on top. The chameleon's actually telling her, with the blue lights, that it's really quite moist and she doesn't need to irrigate today. That's fantastic. She's got more time to do things like weeding or attending to a small business, which she also runs back in the village. Lucy's really pleased that she's got some time up her sleeve today because she knows there's a meeting on back at the village with our team where they're going to be discussing their chameleon results. But before she goes, she does one final thing. She downloads the data from the chameleon onto her mobile phone using a wireless hotspot. That's because when she gets back to the village and she's back in mobile range, she can upload that data to the cloud and then look at it on her, in her leisure on her phone and then compare those results with her neighbours and so on. Do you know Lucy has never owned a landline telephone in her whole life? But like many African farmers these days, she uses a mobile phone daily for all sorts of things. So Lucy races back to the village. It's another, another seven kilometre walk. The sun's even hotter now, but she's, on her, she's in a hurry because she wants to make the meeting, which is in full swing under a tree when she arrives back. The farmers have their phones out and they're discussing animatedly what their chameleon patterns are showing. There are blue and green and red colours showing moisture down the soil profile and then through the season. And they're comparing those visual patterns with their own internal rules that they use of when to put water on and when not. And they're learning a lot about those rules. What they're seeing in these patterns today is there's a lot of blue. There's a lot of days when they shouldn't be watering or there's no need to be watering. Lucy happens to notice that the neighbour, that's the one she's having this fight with, has a lot of red in his, in his colours today. So with some relief, she's able to turn to him and say, my friend, you can use my water today, or our water today, I don't think I need to irrigate. She's so relieved to be able to do that, and that big knot in her stomach is starting to untie. So... 
The farmers all know that in a couple of days' time they're going to have to make that seven kilometre walk back out to the farm's plot, farm plots to decide whether they should be irrigating again. They know from bitter experience that often they'll make that journey out there and discover when they get there there's no need to irrigate and then they have to walk all the way back again. A bit of a waste of time really. So what the guys discuss, my team discusses with the farmers is this idea of employing some local villagers who can be paid to go around the irrigation scheme on their bicycles and their own mobile phones and read the data for the farmers. Take it back to the village, upload it to the cloud, the farmers can look, then look at their results on their phones at their leisure and then decide whether they want to make that big walk out to the farm. It's a real time saver. Lucy is really excited about this idea. She's a busy woman and she has a teenage daughter who's in boarding school who she hasn't seen for weeks and it's a full day's trip on the local bus to go and visit her. She thinks, on my next day off, wouldn't it be fantastic to turn up unannounced and see my daughter and see the big smile on her face at me turning up unannounced. The chief is really excited about this idea. He's at the meeting as well because it's going to supply some jobs for his village. So he loves the idea too. Now the other idea they all start getting excited about is this idea of expanding the irrigation scheme. They want to buy more land and they want to get access to more water. But it's not as simple as that. They have to show the bank who will lend them the money to buy the land and access the water that they deserve that loan, that they're using their current irrigation as efficiently and as effectively as possible. This is where the chameleon comes in. The chief knows that if he can gather up all his chameleon results from his villages and present them to the bank and show that they are using their water as efficiently as possible, they're growing as much food as they can to feed their families and a little bit extra to sell at the market. So he really likes the idea. You know, Lucy's sitting quietly listening to all this and she thinks, you know, there's a bit of hope here for my future. Maybe my kids, when they finish school in a few years' time, will decide to come back to the village and be a farmer like me. Instead of heading off to the big city to find work there like everyone else does. And with this thought, a little spark of hope starts to spring into life. And she feels a lot of positivity about the future. Now, Lucy's not an isolated case here, I'm telling you about. There are hundreds of farmers like her that we're working with at the moment across Africa, and we aim to reach thousands. It's not a vain hope because farmers want to work with us. They can see for themselves that they can grow more food and do it more efficiently by using technology like the chameleon. And governments are getting really excited about the idea too. They spend a lot of money installing and building and maintaining these irrigation schemes. So if they have some way of monitoring how well they're working, that's great too. So, next time you're sitting down to a meal, have a think about how much water it may have taken to grow that food you're eating, one litre per calorie. And I urge you to marvel at how such a simple digital device like this can make a difference to people's lives. I ask you to support the world's farmers. They work hard to grow food for us. They create jobs for our communities and they look after our environment. But I also ask you to give thanks for the creative collaboration you see on show here occurring between scientists and farmers that through their joint efforts can make a genuine difference to people's lives. Thank you.